I've been laughed at a lot because of the joy of the Lord. What's up, everybody? Woohoo! I love this so much. Um, just getting to sit down and open up the Word of God, and I'm just so encouraged by the Word, and I love just knowing that God is using this video for the glory of His name to work in your life um, and to work in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. And so it just brings me great joy. And something else that brings me joy is this shirt. I love this shirt. I got it at a consignment thrift um, store in Scotland, in Edinburgh, where me and my family went earlier this summer. Oh my goodness, it is like very comfy, but I feel like I'm dressed up a little bit. So it's really fun. Um, Y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to the video today. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Emma May McDaniel, and this is just such a joy to me. And speaking of joy, that is what we are talking about today. We are talking about how to stay positive when it doesn't make sense to, how to choose and walk, how to choose joy and walk in joy whenever our circumstances um, beg to differ, and how to stay grateful whenever we, it doesn't really appear as though we have much to be grateful for, and it feels like it would be much easier to complain and to grumble. Um, which all of these things are so relatable. Um, I asked a question a couple of weeks ago, what topics y'all would like to be covered, where in the word you'd like to go, and this is one that came up, and so I'm really excited. And also, a lot of what I share today is coming out of my latest book, You Are, Realizing Who You Are Because of Who God Is. One of the chapters in it is titled, You Are Made for Joy. And so if you are encouraged um, by today's video or you're looking for a good devotional to go through either by yourself or with a group of girls or with a mentor or oh, your mom, like if you're wanting to go through a devotional that um, takes you to the word and encourages you in who God is, who you are, and what you were called to do, um, you are, is available. I'll show it one more time. And I'll also put the link down below. Boop. There we go. <laughs> so I wanted to start off with this quote because it's just phenomenal. Um, Elizabeth Elliot, who I just love, if y'all have not heard of her, have y'all, if y'all have not heard of her, um, she was the wife of Jim Elliot, who, um, was known for living his life to preach the word and share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to live for the glory of God. And his wife, Elizabeth Elliot, was also known for preaching the word, sharing the gospel for the glory of Jesus Christ. And they were missionaries. Um, and Elizabeth Elliot, this is a quote of hers. She said, the secret, here's the secret. The secret is Christ in me not me in a different set of circumstances. And I thought that would be a great way to start off our time together because to walk in joy and to be filled with joy, even in a set of circumstances that don't give you reason to be joyful, that, that is very much possible and tangible for you and I. Why? Because of Christ. Because through faith in Him, submission to Him, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And Galatians 5 tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Why? Because in Psalm 16, 11, it says, In the presence of God is the fullness of joy. We read in 1 Chronicles that joy is in the place of the Lord. It, it's who He is. And so when I'm filled with him, when I'm walking in close fellowship with him, I also have joy because it's who he is. And he's with me no matter what. Never does he leave me and never does he forsake me and never does he change. He, he does not change with the seasons. He does not change with my circumstances. And so therefore, even when my circumstances and my seasons and my feelings and my opinions change, he doesn't. 
And because he is joy, that means that me walking in joy, regardless of what I walk through, does not have to change. I want to read a couple of passages passages of scripture with you all because it's just so good. Habakkuk 3, this is, this is what he says. Though the fig tree does not bud, he is about to list off some circumstances that give you reason to complain, to be bitter, to be that have no ounce of joy whatsoever. It doesn't make sense to be positive. This is, these are the circumstances he's about to lay out for us. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. That sounds barren. It sounds depressing. It sounds empty. It sounds sad. It's like, This makes sense for me to just wallow and be in the dumps because there's literally no fig trees, there's no grapes, there's no olive crop, there's no field, there's no sheep, there's no cattle. It's like, how do I respond to that? Verse 18 of chapter 3. Yet I will. You see how there's like a determination there? It's a choice. Habakkuk said, I will. I choose. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer, enables me to tread on great heights. He gives me a new perspective so I can see my circumstances. I can see my life. I can see my temporary setting from an eternal perspective in his presence where the fullness of joy is. I love 1 Peter. 1 Peter, it starts off by saying, praise be to the God who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in his great mercy, he has given us new hope. He has given us new birth. This hope that we have in him is alive. And this new birth that we have, it's, a li- it's living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And he's also given us an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. And this inheritance is kept in heaven for us who, through faith, are being shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, this is why it's so important to read the context. Because starting, if we had just started in verse 6, which is where it starts talking about joy, and it says in all this, it's in, in all of what? The five verses prior show us why we greatly rejoice. Verse 6, in all of this that we just said, this living hope, this new birth, this inheritance that never fades, this protection that comes from my God, In all of this, you greatly rejoice. Though now, he's about to talk about our circumstances. Though now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Life is difficult right now. These have come, these difficulties, these circumstances that you may not have chosen for yourself These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him and you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. What are we hearing here? That our circumstances are trying. They're difficult. They're giving us reason to not be joyful. But in the midst of those things, what do we look back to? We look back to the fact that we have a living hope, a new birth through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and an inheritance that is kept in heaven for us that will never perish, spoil, or fade, and a salvation that is coming and is going to be revealed. It is in that that I rejoice. And there's also this really cool hope and sense of reality that I have that like there's purpose in this difficulty. This is this suffering is not in vain. 
These trying and troubled seasons are not wasted by my God. Because he goes on to say, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Again, James brings that up in chapter 1 when he's talking to the believers and he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith, it produces perseverance. Paul said the same thing. We're hearing it from Peter, we're hearing it from James, and we're hearing it from Paul. In Romans 5, verses 3 and 5, he says that we, we boast in our suffering. We boast in our affliction. Those are really interesting words to put together. I am boasting in my trials. Why? Because I know that my suffering leads to endurance, and my endurance leads to proven character. And that proven character, it leads, it leads to hope that doesn't disappoint. It leads to hope that doesn't put me to shame. Because my God, He has poured His love out on me through the Spirit that He has given me. So not only are we getting to discover that Christ, His presence, what He has done, my hope in Him, that gives me joy being filled with His Spirit, because in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. It gives me joy. But also, I know that me walking through this difficulty is not wasted. But God is using it to sanctify me in you. He's using it to purify us, to make us look more like His Son. He promises. We read this verse often. You probably know it by heart. In Romans 8, 28, you could probably quote it, many of you. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose, which is so true. Praise be to God that he is sovereign and he's working all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. But keep reading to verse 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, verse 30, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Do you see the bigger picture here? He's working all things together for good. and And a part of that is he's making us into the image that he designed us to be in in the, in the originally in the beginning like to look like his son he says i love this he says so that jesus might be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters as he's conforming us to the image of jesus there's purpose in our struggle isn't that just so hopeful i find so much comfort in that and I also, I want to acknowledge too, like we read verses like 1 Thessalonians, in 1 Thessalonians 5 that says rejoice always. And we read different scriptures like this that say even in the midst of extreme difficulty, rejoice in the Lord. And this is true. This is This is the instruction of scripture. This is, the word of God is breathed by God. It is, it is profitable for teaching us, for correcting us, for rebuking us, for training us in righteousness. So we may be equipped thoroughly, made complete for every good work. It is, this, is, this is worthy of submission. The word of God is worthy of our submission. But what does that practically look like to rejoice always? I think sometimes we can hear that and think like, well, does that mean that I'm fake? Because I don't like to smile and act chipper whenever my heart is so sorrowful, it feels fake. Like, what what does this look like to rejoice always whenever I'm genuinely so sad, so bothered, so heavy laden? That's a great question. I wanna encourage you that to be joyful is not to be fake. It's not to pretend like you aren't sad or to suppress how you are really feeling, no. I mean, even if you read through the Psalms, you see how David cried out to the Lord and he was so honest. 
He expressed his sorrow. He expressed his sadness. He expressed his questions, his frustrations. He expressed his need with such emphasis. Like David was so honest before the throne of God. So no, it's not to be fake. It actually is to be honest. And in your honesty, I'm submitting that to God. I'm submitting my feelings. I'm submitting my questions. I'm submitting it to God. God, I am feeling this way and I'm going to be honest about it. And I choose to submit to you. I choose to trust you. I choose to look to you. I choose that in the midst of all of these things, I choose to reflect on the hope that I have because of your son. I choose to rejoice because I know that this is not in vain. I know, God, that you are using this to bring you glory. I know that you're working all things together for my good, that you're purifying me, that you're leading me in the way everlasting. I know that you are working this together and your purpose, which is a good purpose, cannot be thwarted cannot be undone it's not fake it's actually so real and what I think is so cool is that when we're honest about how we feel we're even more of a testament of how powerful the joy of the Lord is because we're living proof that the joy of the Lord really is strong like the joy of the Lord really is my strength and it really is steady in the midst of unsteady circumstances and emotions it's like, yeah, I'm going to be honest that I'm going through a really difficult time right now. And yeah, I'm going to be honest that I am experiencing sadness and grief or frustration and questions and doubt. Like I'm a human and I experience those things, but I take them to the Lord. I submit them to him. And as Elizabeth Elliot said, the secret is Christ in me, not me in a different set of circumstances. It's not like I become joyful once everything becomes okay. It's like, well, of course you would be. Even people who don't know God would be. It's like how Jesus says in Luke, where he says, like, you've been told to love those who love you back, but to hate your enemies. Well, he said very truly, I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Bless those who curse you. For if you love those who love you back, like, well, duh. He said even the pagans do that. That's not hard to do. It's not hard to like somebody who is likable. It's not hard to like somebody who really likes you. Like, but Jesus calls it a step higher. It's actually, I, I, I call you to love those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. I call, I call you to submit to me. I call, I call you to rejoice as you trust in me. And as you, sub as you submit to me, you rest in the hope that you have in me. Even when your circumstances beg to differ. Even when the fig tree is not budding. Even when the olive crop, even when the crops fail. Even when the cattle and the sheep are, are nowhere to be found. Even then. When you face trials of many kinds, when you're suffering, you can boast in it. How powerful of a testament is that to a world who is craving joy and hope and peace? To a world that is filled with trouble and it's hard to find quietness and it's hard to find a soul of rest because our world is constantly filled with trouble. We as the church are the light of the world, a city built on a hill that cannot be hidden. And a part of that is that we walk in the joy of the Lord even when it doesn't make sense to because his joy is being made complete in us and because we have something greater he's giving us feet like a deer so we may stand on high places and see our circumstances from a from a perspective of heaven knowing that there's something bigger than this. That my, cry, my God has overcome. That he is the victorious one. That I have hope beyond this world. I submit to him knowing he's working all of this together. And he cannot, has not, and never will be defeated. His light shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot, has not, and never will overcome it. I rejoice greatly in the God of my salvation. I choose to. I submit to him. Why? 
because he's filled me with his Holy Spirit and he is the best reason to rejoice even when the world gives me a thousand reasons not to. I also want to encourage you, don't be ashamed of your joy for it hated me first. If the world welcomed you as its own, you should be very concerned and surprised. He said, the world's not gonna welcome you as its own because you belong to me. You don't belong to the world any longer. I've called you out of it to be my light in it. And that's so powerful. Don't be ashamed of your joy. It's the spirit of the living God inside of you. How powerful is that? And that goes hand in hand with gratitude. I didn't speak a whole lot on gratitude in this video, but I do want to share Philippians 2 with you guys. Verse 14 of Philippians 2, do everything without grumbling or arguing, other versions say, or complaining, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine like stars coming back to the light of the world. You will shine like stars, or you will shine, sorry. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. I'm holding firmly to the word of God. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain, Paul says. The gratitude, it's the same message as joy. Because you're going to be given so many circumstances. You're going to walk through so many seasons that beg to differ why you should be joyful and why you should be grateful, why you should be positive, why you should be praising God. It's like, don't you see the circumstances you're standing in? Those fig trees are not budding. You don't have to have your hands raised. Oh, but I do. Oh, but I do. My God is so good. He's so worthy. He's so much bigger than what I can currently see. I refer to this verse all the time, but I set my eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Because I know that what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal, and that's what I'm living for. It's for the glory of my God, eternal, eternal mindset in the midst of this life here on earth. I praise God. I rejoice in God. I will be thankful unto God. 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. I give thanks as I reflect on what my God has done, reflect on what he, I think on what he's doing, and I trust in what he's promised to do that I've yet to see. I have faith. The confidence in what I hope for and the certainty of what I cannot see, he's worthy of it. And it's a testimony of his heart. It's a testimony of his goodness. It's a testimony of how worthy he is of our fear, of our trust, and of our submission to a world that's honestly craving it. How awesome. And I know I said this at the beginning, but a lot of what I just shared with you is from the You Are Made for Joy chapter in my book, You Are. So I'm going to put the link for that down below if you are looking for a Devo um, to go through or you are just really encouraged by this um, and you want to go deeper in, in Scripture on different topics such as this. But guys, I love you so much. I pray that this brought so much encouragement to you. And be sure and subscribe if you have not. Comment down below how you were encouraged. And seriously, let me know. Like, what topics would you like to dive into? Where in scripture would you like um, teaching to come from? Um, and yeah, y'all, have the best day ever. And know that I love you and God loves you so much, so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die for you and rise again so that if you believe in him, you shall never perish but have eternal life. You shall have a reason to live in joy, even when your circumstances beg to differ.